My name is Hannah and this is my beauty budget. Hopefully you can't tell that I trimmed my own bangs with craft scissors. Choppy changey the house. Welcome to my highlighter declutter. This is my single highlighter declutter. I'm so excited to have finally weeded out my single highlighter collection and I filmed the whole process for you. There's really nothing to say in the intro to this video. You, you guys know what a declutter is and you know what a highlighter is, presumably. There is something that I wanted to tell you though. I forgot to put two, two whole highlighters into the video and I found them after I finished filming so I am going to show them to you at the end and let you know what I decided to do with both of those. So if you would like to know what has been omitted from the single highlighter declutter make sure that you stay tuned to the end so you can get the whole picture. But that's it. That's all I had to say. Let's go ahead and get into the meat of the video. Behold all of my single highlighters. This declutter does not include face palettes. I'm going to declutter my face palettes separately, but it does include, I think, just one duo. This is a two-in-one product. We'll get to that. Ah! Disaster. Well, this highlighter might have just sealed its own fate by spitting crumbs everywhere, so let's talk about it first. As I did with my blush declutter, I'm going to separate these products into three piles. The ones I'm keeping because I really, really love them, the ones that I'm throwing away because they're too gross or in too poor of condition to pass along to anyone, and the ones that I'm going to try to find new homes for among my friends and family. This was my first product ever from Fenty Beauty. It is the Fenty Beauty Kilowatt Freestyle Highlighter Duo in Lightning Dust Fire Crystal. And boy, have I loved this product. As you can see, I've pretty much loved it to death. And this side is crumbled and repressed because it did at one point start kind of sloughing off and losing pieces. It is a slightly putty-like formula, so I've been kind of pressing it back into the pan with my fingers. This side is almost completely used up because I used it up. There's tons of pan and what pan is still covered by product is only covered by a very, very thin layer of product. I'm a bit torn about this because there's definitely still plenty of product left on this side of the pan, but this is definitely the side that I really, really loved. This is the side I feel like I meant to purchase when I bought this, and I've truly gotten my money's worth out of this highlighter, possibly more than I ever have out of almost any highlighting product I've ever bought. I don't know how well you can see those swatches, and to be honest, that's probably going to be a problem for the entirety of this video, but needless to say, it is a very beautiful, very highlighting product, and it's a really good match for my skin tone. I love it, and I'll be sorry to say goodbye to it, but I feel like I've already said goodbye to it. And I said this in my blush declutter, but if I were a different woman living a different life, I would try to repress this. I would try to mix it up and repress it, and I would try to repress this and get every last bit out of that. But I'm not a project panner, and I don't feel like I would be happier after having used every last crumb of this side of the pan, for example, than I am now looking at it and realizing that I truly have used this product enough times and over the course of enough months to feel like it was definitely worth it. If this were my only highlighter, I would definitely try to repress it and keep it. But I have so many beautiful highlighting products and there's nothing about this that's truly unique compared to my other highlighting products. This is a color of highlighter that I have a lot of and it's not more blinding than any of my other products or anything like that. It's just pretty perfect and that's why I've loved it and used it so much. 
if it were in better condition, I would keep it and I would use more of this side. But honestly, I can't even get a brush in there right now without it floofing and crumbling all over the place. As you saw, I can't even open it without it just losing its bananas and going everywhere. So as sad as I am to do it, I think I'm going to have to go ahead and discard this product. Again, if it were in better condition and I didn't want to use it anymore, I could send it to someone. But if I sent this through the mail, it would just arrive as a pile of powder. So I think that for a combination of all of those reasons, I'm ready to let this one go. It occurs to me to mention that with my decision about this product, I feel like I'm revealing here on my channel that I value minimalism and simplicity and kind of clarity in my makeup collection, and I guess you could say in my life, I value that over economy. So I'm not a person who feels like it's wasteful to get rid of this product even though there's still technically the stuff of it in there. I'm a person who feels like it would be a waste of space to keep this highlighter around when I feel like I'm pretty much never gonna use it again because I'm loath to reach for it because when I open it, it goes everywhere and I'm loath to spend the time repressing it because I have so much else to spend my time on. So it is a matter of philosophy. I know that some people would not say goodbye to a product that still has so much stuff left in it, but for me, it feels like the right decision and the decision that's really gonna make me happy moving forward. Let's talk about these three ColourPop highlighters. That one is Spoon. That one is Flexitarian. And that one is Lunch Money. Now of these three, the one that I truly, truly love, as you can probably tell by looking, is Spoon. It's the one that looks nude on my skin tone. It's the one that really, really blends in with my skin tone. And it also has glitters in it. So Flexitarian tends to really look bright silver on me. And for that reason, I don't reach for it very much. It really makes me look like I'm wearing makeup. And I have other highlighters that are just as blinding that don't give that kind of silvery makeup-y stripe look. And then Lunch Money is just super subtle and it's so subtle as to almost be a little bit dull. And once again, I have less dramatic highlighters. I mean, I have highlighters that aren't as dramatic as Flexitarian, but that have a more skin-like and a more wet look sheen than Lunch Money. So I feel like a while ago I stopped reaching for Flexitarian and Lunch Money and I continue to reach for Spoon. And that means to me that I would rather finish Spoon, I would rather use it up and pan it, than spread my love out among the three of them. This is the one that I truly love and these ones I could kind of take them or leave them. Now I know from recent experience that Super Shock shadows go bad, they dry out. And these are the Super Shock cheeks. I think that these are gonna dry out before I get around to them, especially given that I have other highlighters that I love so much. So I am going to rehome Lunch Money and Flexitarian. I'm gonna send them to friends and or family members and I'm just gonna keep Spoon. This right here is a true no-brainer. This is How Many Carrots, the Diamond Bomb from Fenty. This was a gift from my beautiful and generous cousin, Mara, at Christmas. She gave it to me as a Christmas gift, and it is absolutely stunning and amazing. It's pretty much sheer with silver glitters, so it shines just as shiny as Flexitarian, but without that kind of silver streak. It's more just like a wet look that comes from glitter, and I really, really love it. The reason that it looks kind of busted is that when I first got it, I was just gently rubbing over the top of it, and it didn't seem that intense. And I was like, this is pretty, but it's not that intense. I couldn't really get the payoff that I was looking for. And then I started to notice that it was kind of sealing over with other product. If I ever had anything else on my fingers when I touched it, it would kind of melt over it. And it, it sort of seemed like it was sealing. So I actually went ahead and dug into it with my thumbnail and I sort of moved it around and I got some of what was underneath onto the top because it's a bit of a, a putty texture. And when I did that, I started to see 
what all the hype was about, I started to see what everyone was talking about and I fell doubly and triply in love with this product. I'm definitely gonna be keeping this. I think I can kind of talk about all of these little sample guys together because to me they sort of all sit in the same area of my drawer and I reach for one of them on a day when I've decided to reach for a liquid highlight or a cream highlight. It's like if I'm not reaching for a normal highlight, I reach for this area of my drawer. And because they all kind of blend together for me in a way, a lot of them aren't getting very much use. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pull out the ones that I want to keep. I think that's what I'm gonna do. This one I love. This was sent to me by the wonderful Courtney. It's the Cover FX Shimmer Veil and it's in the color Amethyst. And I was totally not expecting to love this because I don't generally gravitate towards colorful highlighters. But this is so beautiful. And because it's pink, I can sort of work it for day. I can kind of work it for a non-editorial look. If it's done carefully, I can make it look a little bit natural or a little bit more like natural makeup. One of the things I love about it is that it sets down and it doesn't budge, but it keeps its sheen. So it's already set and it's actually non-sticky. Like I could blend a powder over top of that and it would it would still be fine. It would have a beautiful blend. It, it's no longer even tacky, which I just think is extraordinary. When I use this on my cheeks, I'll often also use it as an eyeshadow base. I'll put it down all over my lid space and then I'll blend eyeshadow on top of it. And it just has completely captured my heart. So much so that there have been a couple of times when I considered picking up the same product in another color. I just think it's really beautifully formulated. I'm a big fan and I use this way, way more than I expected to when I opened the package from Courtney and saw that it was included. Of my natural, regular cream highlight type products, this is the one that I like the most. This is the Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector Spotlight in the color Moonstone, which is the one that I think matches my skin the best of the Becca products and it just looks stunning on the skin. It just looks stunning, and it's very natural. It lasts all day. It blends in really well. I don't know how well you will be able to see it, but it gives my skin a glisten. Not quite as glossy a glisten as, for example, the Stila Heaven's Hue highlighter that I included in my blush declutter because the color that I have is more blushy. Not quite as wet of a glisten as that, but just exactly the appropriate no makeup makeup glisten. If I had to pick one of all of my kind of weird cream products for that purpose, this would be the one. I think this is the one that I'm gonna keep. And I'm not going to keep any of the three that are trying to do the same thing as that. So this is the Urban Decay Naked Skin Highlighting Fluid, and it's actually a slightly better match for my skin tone. It's a little bit less yellow and a little bit more neutral, and objectively I kind of like it better, but I don't like how fast it dries, and I feel like it almost always ends up looking patchy on me when I use it. And for that reason, I always reach for this one instead of this one, but I've had both of these like for over two years, and I'm not even close to finishing one of them. I'm, I'm like halfway through both of them. So I think I can, you know, this is so tiny, and it's so fiddly, and it's so kind of caked onto itself. I think that it can just go in the trash. I'm not gonna try to foist that on anyone. This is a deluxe sample size of the Vanish Champagne Flash from Hourglass, so it's the, the Vanish highlighting stick, I think it was called, in Champagne Flash, and it's, it's pretty. It's pretty, but I just, it's so little and fiddly, I forget that I have it. It's very, very natural. There's nothing extraordinary about it to me. I think if I wanted to look like this, I would be more happy with ColourPop Spoon or with the Becca one. And I haven't used very much of this, so I feel like I might actually be able to foist this off on someone. I'm gonna try to give that away. And then the same here with Benefit What's Up. It's like the exact same type of product, but it's very, very peachy, not very shiny, just awkward, never think of it, never reach for it, ready for it to be gone. The Cover FX 
custom enhancer drops. This is in Moonlight, I think. Yes, the Cover FX Custom Enhancer Drops in Moonlight. I thought I really loved this and I used them for a while because when you first start blending it out, it's so, so shiny. Like when you're at that place, it looks so metallic. But then the more you blend it, it just kind of blends away. And what it blends away to for me is a little bit of a bronzy color. And I think if anything, it just darkens my skin a little bit. It, it kind of looks like silvery metallic, but also bronze. And if I ever add it into my foundation or anything, it just kind of darkens it. And that really, really doesn't work for me. So again, this one's getting kind of gross. It's quite old. I think it's like well over a year old. And I think that that one uh, has seen its last day. The Clinique Hefty Highlight Chubby Stick. I think I'm gonna keep this. Can you see here? Okay, so this is different. This is different than the others. And I don't know how well you'll be able to see, but I can tell you from experience, the swatch isn't really telling the whole tale. But this is a special product because it's very, very, very wet look. Almost nothing makes my skin look as wet, truly wet as this does but it dries down and it doesn't stay tacky like the Glossier one does. It, it really, really dries down almost to a powdery finish and still stays looking super wet. I think that I have failed to reach for it as much as it deserves because I've been distracted by all of these other little rolly tubes that are in my drawer in the same spot as this. So my hope is that by clearing out these ones, this one will spring to my hand more often because it is a product that really impressed me. All right, and this is a Jouer highlighter that Wendy sent to me. It is the powder highlighter in Rose Quartz. This actually arrived shattered in the mail, I remember, and it has a texture with enough kind of weight and oil to it that I was able to press it back into its pan without using any kind of mixer. I was able to kind of just press it all back in and it's stayed and it's been, it's pretty sturdy. It's in pretty good shape. It's definitely not as crumbly or as much of a mess as the Fenty one. I can pick this up on a brush. It doesn't really shed everywhere. It opens and closes just fine. And it's a really pretty color. And in fact, I think that this is somewhat close in color and shine and in effect to the lightning dust side of the Fenty Beauty highlight that I've pretty much panned. So I'm gonna kind of consider this to be a replacement for that. I can't stop swatching it because it's so pretty and so shiny and it, it's got like a really beautiful glossy shine to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and hang on to this one. And then I think we all know where this is going. This is one of my true all time most used and favorite products, my Kevin Aquan Neo highlighter. So they bill it as a highlighter because it's the three highlighting colors that Kevin Aquan sells. So there's the darker one, which is really a, a bronze on my skin, like it's really quite bronzy. And then there's the mid-toned one, which is kind of peachy, and the lighter one, which is more champagne. But they're all here together in a gradient. And it works really well for me because I can use the darker side as a glowy bronzer. And it's, it's a nice, kind of mid-tone color, it's not too orange, and that works really well for me as a glowy bronzer. Then that middle peach shade is just kind of like a perfect warm peachy blush for my skin, and the lightest side pretty much is just a, a slight sheen on my skin. And I don't know how well you can see the glossiness there, but this is a gorgeous and very finely milled powder that makes my skin glowy but without looking highlighted. So it's a powder that I can use all over my face and I will strategically place the different colors on different areas of my face to get the effect I want. So this is a product that I use almost on a daily basis sometimes and definitely on a weekly basis or multiple times per week. I'm definitely gonna keep this and I think many of you know that I actually pretty much completely panned one of these. I'll grab out the one that I panned so you can see them both side by side. So here's my sad old Kevin Aquan Neo highlighter. It's totally loose in there, totally 
broken and really, really, really well loved and well used. When I first got this one, it, I received it from Octoly. I said that I was going to keep this one around and try to finish it up and try to like use it as a bronzer because it's really just the bronze side that's left and it was looking very, very dark on me. Whereas when I use this one, I can get quite a light or a fresh look. And I just haven't done that. I put it away in a drawer and I have never reached for it again. I've just been using this one. So I, I feel like I'm, I'm rich in Kevin Aquan highlighter bronzer stuff right now. And just as with the Fenty Beauty, I'm, I'm not going to take the time to repress this. I know that I could, but then I would have two, I would have a backup and I don't like having doubles and I don't like having backups. So I'm just going to be honest with myself and and let go of this and not keep telling myself that one day I'm gonna fish it out of my drawer and use up the rest of it. I think um, it was definitely given a good life. Just as they did in the blush declutter, the numbers are breaking down very neatly. If you include my old Kevin Aquan Neo highlighter, I started out with 15, and I'm keeping seven, these seven up here. I am throwing away these four sad old busted ones, and I am going to rehome these four right here. And here is my newly edited collection of single highlighters. I have one very bright highlighting powder, one much softer highlighting powder, two highlighting putty products, and two little liquids in containers, and one cream stick. So there's a nice array of different styles of highlighter here before me. Some of you might know this, but there are a couple of highlighting products in the purgatory box right now, and it's looking like I'm going to be keeping some of them. So that was partly what allowed me to get my highlighter collection down to just this little size. I think that this category might be joined soon by one or even two more products. that is it. That is my single highlighter declutter except for the two that I forgot to include in the video. So this one I forgot to include because I had shopped my stash for it. I have a good reason actually for forgetting both of these. So this is the Tarte Exposed Amazonian Clay 24 Hour Highlighter. It was over with a bunch of other stuff. It was over here with my things for which I have shopped my stash recently. And it's a very gold seeming highlight and so you wouldn't think that I would love it because white highlighters with a gold shift they kind of show up on my skin in a funny non-blended way I find. But there's something about this one when I buff it into my skin and buff it and buff it and sort of crush the pearls and cream them into my cheeks it's almost as if it melts into my skin tone and it buffs out looking less gold and more my nude, like a color that's nude to me. And I really love it for that reason. It's also incredibly shiny and highlighting. Actually, I layered some things on my cheeks today, but it's one of the things I'm wearing. I might still be kind of washed out in the video, so you might not be able to see it, but I'm gonna keep this little thing. It's also, it's a little mini, like it. It's this isn't the full size, Thing, I don't think. I've never had a Amazonian clay 24 hour blush or highlighter, but I think that they're bigger than this. I think that the real ones are bigger than this and this is like a small mini travel size or something. Maybe I'm totally wrong about this. My feeling is that it's kind of a small highlighter and it doesn't take up a lot of space and also I might be able to hit pan on this. I think I, I use this a lot. I like this little guy. And then this is ColourPop's here, Kitty Kitty, and I forgot to include it because it is a little single magnetic pan and it was in with some other face products in a magnetic palette. And it wasn't until I opened my magnetic palette to put away the Anastasia blushes, or the Anastasia Moonchild highlighters that I depotted immediately after filming. I'll show them to you. So I decided to put them in here. I decided to keep all of my depotted or single cheek products in here. So there they are. There's Pink Heart and there's Purple Horseshoe. And 
the blush apricot in the middle and the Ofra winter rose glow blush the two single blushes that I kept in my blush declutter and here's here kitty kitty so when I went to put these away I was like oh no I forgot to include this one and so I'm telling you now about it in the outro it is a really great just straight up no nonsense highlighter that is a good match for my skin tone. I, I don't know if you'll be able to see this swatch either, but it's it's blinding, it's glossy, it's lovely, it's creamy, it's very much like the ColourPop highlighter formula, and the color is just spot on. So I use that a lot when I travel as well. Frequently when I travel, I'll just put this in my magnetic eyeshadow palette and like this little blush in my magnetic eyeshadow palette and then I'll put eyeshadows and that'll be all that I take in terms of those color cosmetics. I won't have to take any separate blushes or separate palettes or eyeshadow palettes or anything. It'll just be that. So it's valuable to me to have a good straight up old fashioned like spot on highlighter in a single magnetic pan like this for travel. So those are the two highlights I forgot to include and I decided to keep them both. That is it. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope that you enjoyed this and don't forget to take extra good care of yourself this week so that you can be the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world.